In this video, we're going to discuss periodic trends in electron affinity and electronegativity. These are two very closely related ideas. Electron affinity, that's the energy released when an electron is drawn into an atom. So if we imagine a electron and a nucleus, we can think about that electron being captured into the orbit of that particular nucleus. And the energy that's released in this case is called the electron affinity. So this is the energy released when an atom gains an electron. And again, energy is released. If you think of it in reverse, of course, it takes energy to remove an electron from an atom. So, of course, dropping, so to speak, the electron onto the atom is going to release energy. Electronegativity is closely related to this idea, but it's slightly different. Electronegativity is going to be the ability of an atom to draw an electron towards itself when that electron's in a bond. We'll learn a little bit more about electronegativity later, but for now, just imagine that there is a bond between a hydrogen atom and an oxygen atom, and these two atoms are sharing two electrons, which I'm going to designate as X's, and I'm going to draw a line between these two electrons to sort of designate a bond. Electronegativity describes, and we also, excuse me, we also should, should say that uh, these electrons are shared between the two atoms, and when we have two different atoms, it turns out that some of these atoms are better at pulling on the electrons in the bond than others. And it turns out that oxygen's a little better at pulling on these two electrons than hydrogen. And so these two electrons in this bond spend a little more time around the oxygen than they do around the hydrogen. And because oxygen has a greater ability of drawing these electrons to it than hydrogen, we see that oxygen has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen. So just to recap the differences, the electron affinity describes how well an electron, excuse me, how well an atom draws an electron to itself, just a singular atom. And that's measured as the energy released when the atom gains an electron. Electronegativity refers to electrons in a bond and how well an atom draws electrons to itself when those atoms are in a bond. Now that we know a little bit about electron affinity and electronegativity, let's discuss what we would expect for these two properties as we move across a period. Is the electronegativity for atoms going to increase or decrease? And as we move down a group, is electron affinity and electronegativity going to increase or decrease as we move down a group? Now, if we think of the idea of the effective nuclear charge, we'll remember that the way we estimated effective nuclear charge, we know that as we move across a particular period, the effective nuclear charge is going to increase. And that effective nuclear charge means essentially a larger and larger and larger positive nucleus. So we can imagine that neon, with a basically an effective nuclear charge of eight, is going to have a much higher electron affinity, a, you know, release of energy when that electron falls onto, so to speak, a nucleus that seems like a plus eight. It'll have a much larger electron affinity than, say, lithium, where the effective nuclear charge is only one. So just to sort of draw that out, we'll remember that with lithium, the effective nuclear charge that we estimate is about one. And with fluorine, the effective nuclear charge that we estimate is going to be about equal to, let it be 9 minus 2, that's going to be 7. And so certainly an electron is going to be much more attracted to this nucleus and remove, release much more energy when it drops, so to speak, onto a positive 7 nucleus than it would onto a uh, nucleus where the effective nuclear charge was 1. And so that that indicates that as we move across a period, that the electron affinity is going to go up. 
Now, electronegativity generally attract, excuse me, generally tracks electron affinity, so we're also going to expect the electron affinity to go up as we move across a period. And all of these trends just refer to all of the elements except the noble gases. This discussion does not refer to the noble gases, just, just so we're clear on this. Now, if we move down a group, say this particular group or this particular group, we have to remember that we're adding shells. You know, the effective nuclear charge down a group kind of stays the same. So if we were, for example, to compare lithium, which has a Z star of about equal to 1, and it has electron, a valence electron in the n equal 2 shell, n equal 1 is full, n equal 2 is where the valence electron is. If we're going to compare that to, say, francium, where again, Z star is about equal to 1, but the valence electron is all the way out in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th shell. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wow, it's way out there. This is the n equals 7 shell. We can see that if we're going to have this particular atom gain an electron, that electron is going to be able to go all the way down to the n equal 2 shell. And while the attraction to a z equal z star is one um, effective nucleus, it's not going to be that strong of an attraction. The electron can still get fairly close when the atom is relatively high in the period, excuse me, in the, in the family. Now we try the same trick over here, and then the electron can only get down here into the seventh shell, which is the valence shell. That's really far from a tiny, tiny effective nuclear charge of plus one. There's not going to be much of a release in energy when the electron gets attracted to a francium nucleus. And so what this tells us is that as we move down a group, the effective nuclear charge is going to decrease. And of course, when these atoms are in bonds, the electronegativity, which sort of tracks the electron affinity, the electronegativity is also going to drop as you move down a group. And so for these two properties, the electron affinity and the electronegativity, as you move this way across the period, they're both going to increase. And as you move this way down a group, these properties are going to decrease. And so basically, as you move this way in the periodic table, you go to increasing electronegativity. And as you move this way through the periodic table, you're going to move through decreasing electronegativity and electron affinity. And it turns out, sure enough, fluorine is the atom in the periodic table with the highest electronegativity. And francium is the element in the periodic table with the smallest electronegativity.